Hello class, we are in page 287 in our arithmetic book. Today we're going to learn about repeating decimals. Now we did learn how to change from a fraction to a decimal and all we had to do was divide the numerator by the denominator. Today we're going to actually do the same exact thing. We are going to divide the numerator by the denominator, but this time though, even though we keep dividing, even though we keep annexing zeros, our decimal our division is never, ever, ever, ever going to end. Now, what am I going to do if, if my division actually never ends? Now, that's what we call repeating decimals. So we are in page 287. One thing is a reminder, you do have to know the fraction and the decimals by memory. So I have up on my screen, 1 half equals 0 0.5, 1 fourth equals 0 0.25, 3 fourths equals 0.75, 1 fifth equals 0 0.2, 2 fifths equals 0 0.4, 3 fifths equals 0 0.6, 4 fifths equals 0 0.8, 1 eighth equals 0 0.125, 3 eighths equals 0 0.375, 5 eighths equals 0 0.625, and our last one, 7 eighths equals 0 0.875. You do have to know those fractions and the decimals by memory. So moving on to our lesson today about repeating decimals. So the fact about repeating decimals is a repeating decimal is a decimal that never terminates. That means it never ends when the numerator is divided by the denominator. So for example, if I divide two divided by three and I keep annexing zeros after zeros, after zeros, after zeros, after zeros, my decimal, my division is never ever going to end. That's when I call it a repeating decimal. But whenever I'm writing down a repeating decimal, I am not going to fill my entire page with 0.33333333333333333 and then moving on to the next page 33333. I'm not going to do that. So what am I going to do whenever I have a repeating decimal? There are two ways, but there is the most common way and I'm going to teach you the most common way. First off, the first way is by um, is three dots. So three dots following a decimal is one way to indicate a repeating decimal. So I gave you an example of 0.333333. So what I'm going to do right there, I'm going to write down 0.33 and then I will have three dots. Dot, dot, dot. That is telling me that that decimal is a repeating decimal. Now the second way says a line over the digits that repeat is another way to show that the decimal repeats rather than terminates. So if I have a line on top of my number, that is telling me that I have what? A repeating decimal. Let me go, go and show you an example. So I have four fractions and decimals that you also do have to know by memory. So first off, I have one third equals 0.3 repeating. So 0.3 repeating, how do I know it's repeating? The line on that three. So one third equals 0.3 repeating, two thirds equals 0.6 repeating. Then we have one six equals 0.16 repeating. And then we have five six equals 0.83 repeating. So you can see I do have a line over that number that is actually repeating. That means one third is actually 0 0.33333333. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Then I have two thirds equals 0 0.666666 and so on. I have one six equals 0 0.16666. Then I have five over six equals 0 0.8333333 3, 3, 3, 3, and so on. So how am I going to write that down? It's going to be by drawing a line on top of the digit that actually repeats. Let me go show an example though, and I'm gonna use the example of two thirds, which equals 0.6 repeating. So I have two thirds. Let me go ahead and show you why this, actually, this division will actually never ever terminate. So what I'm gonna do to change my fraction to a decimal, I am going to divide my numerator by my denominator. But right here it is, I have three divided by two. How many times can three go into two? That's zero times. 
have zero. And then I'm going to bring up my decimal point. Remember, I have an imaginary decimal point. So I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to annex a zero. How many times can three go into 20? That will be six times. I'm going to write down that six right there. And six times three equals 18. And I have a remainder of two. But I'm not done with my division. Remember, we did learn how to finish our division with our remainder. I'm going to keep annexing zero. So let me go ahead and annex that zero. How many times can three go into 20? Six times again. Six times three equals 18. And I have a remainder of two. I annex a zero again. How many times can three go into 20 again? Six times. Six times three equals 18. Subtract 20 minus 18. I have a remainder of two. And I will keep going. As you can see, my six keeps repeating. So one way I'm going to write that down is going to be 0.6. And then I'm going to do my line over the top, repeating. So that's going to be our lesson today about repeating decimals. Remember, you do have to know those fractions and the decimals by memory. Your class for today is going to be page 287, and you're going to do all page 287. Goodbye.